Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the first video in a series of videos I'm gonna do on landscape jobs that'll only take one day or less. I'm at a friend of mine's house. Uh, I've laid out a bed that's about 120 square feet. There's a gate over here and a screen porch over here and the grass just goes right up into the corner and it kind of needs to go. Painted a nice smooth line on the ground. I'll show it to you in just a minute. Uh, that the mower will be able to come into this gate and just run along this little smooth edge and not have to go up in the corner, not have to weed eat, that kind of thing. Just kind of lowering the maintenance and uh, making the space much more decorative. I've got uh, plants back here that I'll show you when I get to that. There's two gutters in this space that I'm actually going to pipe out of this space using uh, corrugated uh, pipe. I don't want I don't want to do this landscape job and then have a big rain wash. The, um, I'm actually using pine straw here, but pine straw or mulch or whatever you're using, I don't want it to end up washing out. So I'm gonna uh, get the water away from the house uh, underground. I'll show you that when I get to it as well. But that's it. I'm hoping that these jobs are only gonna take between four and eight hours and that we can transform a space. And I'm gonna do try to find different types of jobs. But the very first thing I wanna do, I've painted this line on the ground. I wanna get this edge. So I'm gonna use a trenching shovel and uh, cut this edge in here permanently. The grass is the biggest problem. That, that's the biggest problem on this job. I did not kill it with anything, and so I, need, I still need to remove it. And I can either use my pick matic, uh, you know, do it physically, or I have this electric tiller that I have used successfully on a bunch of jobs that I bought last fall. Uh, it's a pretty inexpensive tool. I'm hoping that it will take this grass off uh, pretty easily. I'm trying to use tools that somebody would just have in their garage or could acquire inexpensively i'm not going to go out and rent big giant tools or bring bring big tools from the garden center that kind of thing i don't want to uh, <laughs> uh the, the point is not to intimidate but to uh, encourage uh in these videos that you know with just basic tools as well we can we can really accomplish quite a bit so i'll show you the edging first here's where this gate opens up and i put this nice curve on the ground here uh there's a uh, there's one of the downspouts there there's a a water spigot here and it'd be nice really to just get one of those boxes to put the water hose in and that would look quite a bit better here i won't be doing that today but you can see the amount of turf that's got to be removed from here like i say this is only 120 square feet so it's not too bad and this line is going to end right here where this gravel is there's additional beds going in further down and then that gutter right there i'm going to tie i'm going to dig uh, from here across to this one tie this one into it and dump it out right here. There's quite a bit of fall uh, right here. So I don't have to uh, worry about how the water is gonna get out of there because there's quite a bit of fall from the house. So the grass is pretty much removed. This electric tiller actually did a great job. It's rained a couple times recently. So this ground is uh, actually a little muddy almost. And I was kind of scared that that thing would only superficially take the grass out. It would just cut it off at the top and then and leave all the roots. But, uh, and it did that the first time. And then I carted out uh, the the top part of it but it, i think it would have just come right back from the root so i ran it over two more times and raked after each one i used the pick matic along the uh, edge here because i didn't want to mess up my edge too much with the tiller so i used this to get the grass out there uh, but this now surprisingly this is kind of a clay sand mix uh, this area i'm in in north carolina is kind of the transition between the heavy clay that's in the piedmont or central part of the state and and more sandier soils in the coastal plain and so uh, we get this weird mix here. It's hard as a rock. Uh, it's acidic soil. It uh, doesn't drain all that great. So we have to leave the plants up a little bit. But uh, for acid loving plants, this is, this is great stuff as long as we, like I say, leave it up a little bit. I used a leaf rake to get out all the finest uh, pieces of grass out of here and a garden rake to kind of pull out the, uh, that initial time after I tilled it to get up the bigger, bigger chunks and then uh, forked it into a, uh, a cart and uh, started a compost pile for my friend back here but it's ready to go now i've just I'm, the next step i'm going to pipe uh, these gutters out uh, connect the two gutters out and i'll show you that after i get it dug in uh, before i cover it back up of course this turns into work uh, very very quickly and it is very very muggy this morning uh, a few things on this corrugated pipe uh, this is the uh, adapter for the uh, downspout uh, to connect into the corrugated pipe this is this black corrugated pipe is available at any of the home improvement stores and uh, I've got a T to uh, connect the two together. Uh, make sure you measure your downspout before you go and buy uh, the corrugated pipe or these uh, fittings uh, because uh, there are two different size, size downspouts normally. This is a smaller one right here 
This one's like a three by four, and I think the other one's like a four by six. It's usually the size of the roof that determines uh, how big the uh, downspouts are, but you do need to keep that in mind. When you dig a trench for something like this, if it's sloped like this is away from the house, throw your soil to the upper part because when you go to fill your trench back in, it's really easy to rake soil back downhill than it is to pull it back uphill. So keep that in mind. I always try to get my guys when we were lands doing landscaping all those years to try to remember that. Put it on the upper side, put it on the upper side. And then the next day you have to say the same thing. But uh, that's it. I'll show you when I uh, lay this in the ground. I try to make sure this pipe disappears directly under the ground. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you'll find the footer on the bottom of the house. and. Uh, and not, it won't allow you to, but I'm kind of a stickler for having these pipes you know, just disappear directly into the ground. So here's how far I've gotten on this. Got this one dropping straight into the ground. Pipe is in the ground here. All the soil's still up here to come pull down on top of it and uh, tamp it back down. Uh, this downspout right here, again, this one actually had some, uh, a piece of concrete down at the bottom of it, the footer on the deck uh, for the screen porch. So it wiggles a little bit as it's coming down, but not too bad. It ties into a T right there, and I've got it running. The edge of the bed is right there. There's all this gravel stuff here that he's gonna be re-landscaping as well, and I just ran it out past here. It falls off really quickly right there, and then this is just gonna have turf back over it. So the pipe is covered up. Um, if you were running this pipe through a lawn, you definitely need to tamp the soil down pretty vigorously to make sure it doesn't end up settling and creating a low space in your grass. It's kind of easy to uh, you know, fill it in, walk on it a little bit, put a little bit more on it, and then walk away from it. It'll definitely settle around the edge of that pipe over time. I'm putting so much foot traffic in this bed today that um, I've walked on it several times, tamped it several times, and now I'm about to dig in it again and so on and so forth. It will be tamped quite well. I won't end up with a depression in here, but in a lawn, you have to be really super careful uh, to make sure you tamp that soil back down on top of that pipe and try to get it around the edge as best as possible otherwise. Um, it will be a problem mowing in the future, scalping your grass in that area in the future. Got the plants laid out here. Uh, this is, like I say, it's kind of a combo clay and sand uh, mix here. It doesn't drain very well. It's rained a couple times recently and it's really mucky to walk in. Uh, I'm completely covered in it uh, at this point, uh, which is how it's supposed to look after two and a half hours of uh, landscaping. Uh, so I've got some pine bark soil conditioner that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna mix that in whatever comes out of this hole Whatever's sitting next to the hole, I'm gonna pour some of that pine bark soil conditioner on top of it and it'll get incorporated into that soil when I plant it. I'm gonna leave the plants up just a little bit in this soil and uh, that's it. After I go, after I get these pieces into the ground, I will uh, go through the individual plants and show you what I've put in here and what the homeowner has uh, picked out with me. So all the plants are in the ground. I'm actually pine strawing this. Uh, the owner uh, likes pine straw and uh, that's what I'm going to use. The uh, this job was done in just a few hours here with uh, five basic tools. I always use a trenching shovel, especially digging in this clay, rather than trying to put a big wide shovel in the ground. It's just easier. You gotta take a few more hacks at it, but uh, certainly easier. And then just a regular leaf rake, a pickmatic, a very old, dull pickmatic that I need to really do to sharpen, a garden rake, and a fork. And a fork I use to uh, get the grass out of here after it was uh, dislodged from the ground by the electric tiller. So I had the electric tiller and then the uh, uh, wheelbarrow as well. This is a Mojo Pittosporum from the Southern Living Plant Collection. I have not covered this plant yet. It's absolutely beautiful. It's got a little dirt on it from where it was just planted. So I'll wash that off after I get the uh, pine straw down. Beautiful, beautiful plant, uh, hardy in zone seven to 10. Where this landscape job is happening is in 7B, right on the edge of eight. Uh, so that uh, Mojo Pittosporum. This is a variegated Pittosporum. I put a dwarf Pittosporum in my yard recently and did a video on it, but not this variegated one. It's very, very beautiful. Uh, flowers in the uh, spring with uh, fragrant flowers. This is a Princess Caroline uh, Penicetum. It's hardy in zone 7B to 10, probably more like 8 to 10, really. But uh, uh, anytime I have something I think might be marginal, as long as I push it up against the house or structure, usually they're okay coming back. Uh, this is Veronica here, the sunny border blue. This is extremely cold hardy, zone three to eight. That's a pretty tough perennial that blooms all summer long. Uh, great for the bees and uh, it can be deadheaded anytime. And I may do that before I'm done, just cut the flowers off and it'll get uh, bigger, better, fuller with more flowers and it'll flower well into fall. Uh, everybody knows I love to use these baby jump boxwoods. I've used them in several places in my yard, um, pretty industrial plants. I put three of those in, uh, they should just fill in together in the back. This is a dwarf uh, butterfly bush. 
Also very cold hardy, lots and lots of new cultivars on these dwarf uh, butterfly bushes, but that one only get about three by three. And so it won't just kind of take over an area like they used to. These need to be cut in the late winter um, back, you know, probably in half. And then they bloom on new growth through the whole summer. Uh, this is one of the most amazing things to me is these new colors of uh, echinacea or cone flowers. Uh, this gold one here uh, in this, uh, I don't even know if that <laughs> some kind of orangey uh, red color on that other one. It's just so beautiful, these uh, new varieties and just every year, just more and more new varieties. And these are hardy in the zone four. So most, most folks will be able to grow some sort of coneflower or echinacea. These are ginger lilies back here. That's a zone eight plant. And the owner of the house really likes these. They're super, super fragrant. They bloom in the late summer and into fall. This one is budded up right here, about to flower, big giant white flowers. Uh, not the most cold hardy thing. This is a, um, a native to Southeast Asia and it's a zone eight to 11 plant. Uh, that's why it's tucked up here against the house and it should be fine. And it's on a slope up there, so it should drain away from it as well um, and not rot it in the winter time. And then on this other end, there's another one of these Mojo uh, Pittosporums, but those are the pieces uh, right there. And you can see uh, we got this nice curved edge now going here we got our two gutters uh, piped out and uh, nice pieces put in that i picked out with the uh, homeowner so i did bring one extra shirt and i've changed into it so uh as my other one was pretty grubby at this point i've got about five hours here at this point uh, that was the edging removing the grass uh, putting in these two uh, pipes uh, and running the water out of here getting these plants in and now getting it pine strawed not too bad. I have a lot of experience doing this. I would expect it to take two people if you have, don't have a lot of experience um, and probably a little longer, even um, maybe six to eight hours for two people uh, could probably uh, knock this out. That little electric tiller does a pretty good job. I did, have, like I said, I did run over it three times. I ran over it the first time and I think it all it did was kind of decapitate the grass right at the, or the weeds right at the top. And uh, I think they would have just come right back up. So after I cleaned it up the first time, I went over it again and then just to make sure a third time and I raked it all out. And I think I've got 99.5% of it. I think no matter what, um, anybody was gonna leave a little bit. So there's gonna be a weed or two poking up here or there. It's mostly crabgrass, so it's gonna die as soon as we get a frost anyway. So uh, all in all, not too bad. This is four bells of pine straw. Uh, I think this is 120 square feet. Uh, usually we can get about 90 square feet out of a cubic yard of mulch. So if you went and got bulk mulch somewhere, you would be buying it by the cubic yard. So this would have taken about one and a quarter, maybe one and a third cubic yards of uh, mulch. Uh, the equivalent that to that is probably 18 bags. If you were buying those two cubic foot bags of mulch at one of the box stores, about 18 bags, uh, 16 to 18, something like that uh, would have gotten it done. But all in all, I mean, we I mean, really transformed the space in a very, very short period of time here. Before I continue this series, I'd like to get some feedback from you. Would it have been better to shoot a time lapse of the whole thing and then narrate it uh, afterwards? Uh, would that be better just to sped up, um, you know, uh, time lapse? Uh, with a narration behind it, or is the way that I did this um, adequate? Uh, just let me know in the comments down below. And uh, as I go forward with this, I'm going to find shady areas. I'm going to find areas that we'll have to do some hardscaping in. I'm going to find some areas that just all different types of things that we can, you know, show uh, shade plants and sun plants and, you know, herbaceous perennials and just evergreens and screening things and all those kinds of things. Uh, uh, different types of small landscape jobs that can be done in one day. And but like I say, before I move forward, is it interesting? And uh, is it uh, this format, uh, the way that I just, uh, you know, I'm editing this and putting it out to you. What do you think about it? I want your feedback before I uh, move on and find more of these uh, little one day landscape jobs. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please hit the like button because that helps share this video so I can get feedback from as many people as I possibly can. And uh, thank you very much for watching.